What is going on guys? My name is Michael with Crash Course Code and this is going to be the first video in a tutorial series on Swift game programming. So I did a series before on Objective-C game programming. Swift is basically just um, Apple's new kind of upgraded programming language. It's the language they want to start using for development. And um, Objective-C is by no means obsolete. It will stay relevant for the next several years. However, moving forward, if you do want to continue with iOS development, you probably want to start learning and developing with Swift. So this tutorial is going to be geared towards people who have um, some programming experience and kind of can understand the basic structures behind programming and for people who understand the basics of Swift. And if you don't, don't worry, I will link to the Apple documentation. Um, it's actually a really good guide made by Apple which will help you get started with the basics of Swift programming. Um, just kind of like give that a read through and then come back and you should be able to understand kind of um, most of what's going on in this tutorial series. So this is the what we're going to actually be making within this tutorial series. We're going to make this little game right here. You're going to be this little ninja dude. Um, it says tap to start. You start, the world starts moving, and you can tap again to um, switch sides on this little bar that's going by here. And over time, the world speeds up and um, it gets more and more difficult. Now, um, in this one in particular, it actually isn't getting more difficult because I didn't change the spacing between the blocks. However, we will, um, we will change that throughout this tutorial series. So this is gonna be the game, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to keep learning, um, if you wanna, I mean, if you wanna like learn how to make this game, keep watching the tutorial series, I will be putting all the code up on GitHub and I will link that to, um, I will link that in the place below as well when I finish this series. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. So, we're going to just open up Xcode here. You're going to see um, you have all these options here. You want to click on iOS application and game. Because we just want to create a basic game template. And we're going to call this game Nimble Ninja. Uh, organization name, whatever you want. Um, language, Swift, game technology, sprite kit, device, iPhone. And hit next here. So, um, okay, so now that we have our new, uh, new template here, you can see a couple things that we need to set up with the game. So if you go up here and you kind of test out what act the actual game template gives you in terms of code, um, you're gonna see, uh, let me just, I need to shut down this thing over here before I can get the simulator working. So you're gonna see that this template just makes this really basic deal. It just says, hello world. And if you click on the simulator, it kind of creates this circling ship here. So this is just kind of just the standard default sprite kit template. What we wanna do is delete all the code that makes all this so we can replace it with the code for our game. So we can just stop that here. Um, you'll see over here we have three main files. We have gamescene.sks, gamescene.swift, and gameviewcontroller.swift. This gamescene.sks, if you've worked with Xcode before, is kind of like the storyboard equivalent of um, SpriteKit. Uh, you can kind of like drag and drop things and try to get like a basic interface going. As of now, um, it doesn't seem like it has like a ton of different features. I haven't really experimented with it much. But as I understand it, it kind of seems like it's in its infancy here with um, Sprite Kit. So most game developers don't actually use it at, the, at this moment. So in this series, we're not even going to use it. So you can just delete this. We're going to move it to the trash. Now under um, gamescene.swift, we want to delete this code right here. This code just creates that label you saw, that hello world label. And we're also going to delete this code right here. And this is the code that makes it so when you click on or when you tap the screen, it kind of that circling ship shows up. Now we can go into game view controller. We can just delete all this, this extension SK node stuff, and also all this, because this is what was originally giving our, um, the .sks file. It was kind of giving, loading that SKS file in. And since we're not gonna have that, we can delete all this as well. So now we basically, we just have a blank, um, a pretty blank template here. So let me just open up one thing on the side. 
uh, right here. I'm going to go to, okay. So to start, we're going to set up our game view controller. This is only gonna to have to be set up once. So don't worry too much if you don't understand everything that's going on here, because some of it can be kind of confusing conceptually. So to start, we're going to do, um, we're gonna create a global variable called scene. We're gonna say var scene, game scene, um, exclamation mark. And this exclamation mark just means we're promising that we're going to um, actually initialize the scene later within the code. Um, if you don't have it there, it won't let you do it. And that's just kind of a new Swift thing. You'll probably read about it if you go read the Apple documentation on Swift. So in the view did load method now, we just need to set up our basic scene. We're gonna do super.view did load first because that's kind of a good thing to do. Just make sure the um, anything that's happening in the super class gets done. And first we're going to configure our view. So how SpriteKit works is SpriteKit has um, the view of the game controller and the view presents the scene to the game. And the scene is what everything happens in. So like the vast majority of the time we're going to be programming in this game scene.swift file. So if that doesn't make a ton of sense, just kind of like go through the steps, go through the motions and just type out all this code. And don't worry about it too much because you kind of just start to understand how SpriteKit works the more, that you, the more that you use it. So we're gonna say let skView equals view as skView. This just sets um, the view, which is um, as default a UI view to an SK view. So we can actually use those methods, the present scene method. And we're gonna say skView.multiple touch enabled equals false. This just makes it so if your finger is already on the iPhone, you can't tap it again. Um, it's not a huge deal if that's set to true, but I'm just gonna set that to false for now. After this, we're going to do create and we are going to create and configure the scene. And to do this, we need to create our scene. So to create the scene, which is our global variable we have up here, we're gonna say scene equals game scene uh, size skview.bounds.size. So this just creates a new scene within the size of our SK view. And we're gonna say scene.scale mode equals dot aspect fill. And again, if some of this stuff is not making sense, don't worry too much about it. After this basic setup is done, things will start making a whole lot more sense. So after this, the last thing we need to do is print, present the scene. And we're gonna do the SK view dot present scene scene. So as of now, if we run this, you're gonna see, we're just gonna have a blank, um, kind of just like a blank box here to start. Um, to test to make sure our scene is set up correctly, we can go into our game scene.swift file and we can say background color equals uh, dot blue color, or UI color dot blue color. I'll explain the, um, the short syntax in a later video. Now you see if we run this, our background color is gonna be blue. So our scene is set up. We have a, ba a basic kind of blank template we can work off of. And in the next video, we can actually start adding objects and um, blocks to our scene.